Hello, everyone, and welcome to Krutinger Puppets Live. Today, we're going to be doing a little Q&A talkback, as well as working on a puppet build. Stick around. All right, guys, I've got a whole bunch of cool stuff to talk about and to show you. Uh, in my last video, the, the haircut gone wrong, at the end of that video, I asked you guys to send me some questions to my Instagram. That's one of the best ways to get a hold of me is to leave a comment on my Instagram. And we had some questions. And I'm going to get into my build in just a moment, too. I'm going to just be doing a simple snoof. And you can find this pattern on my website. It's completely free, as well as a bunch of other uh, patterns that are available on my website, too, which we can talk about a little bit later. But I want to jump into the first question that I had um, before we get into it, because I thought it was kind of a really good one. And it's right here. Uh, it was Hugh. And he says, um, do you ever get bored of puppetry after doing it for so long? And I think that's a really good question, because... Um, People, it's easy to fall in love, fall out of love with something if you do it for too much. You know, you're, you're over, it's like eating too much candy on Halloween. After a while, you start to get sick of it. But uh, not really with me with puppetry so much. It has happened to me in other art forms, which is why, which is how I know when to back off a little bit. And luckily, I'm so busy with my schoolwork uh, during the day as, as an art teacher and and my family life that that's not really too much of a problem but before i start getting into too many more questions i do want to get into the build because i'm going to be using some of this scrap blue fur i have today to make a snoof now i am uh typically you want to do it along the way the fur is going down but since this is, this is a scrap piece of fur i don't want to waste it and I, it's not tall enough to, to do it this way so i am gonna break the rules a little bit and go against the grain but as long as i do it consistently um you can actually use that as a technique to change the look of your puppets and i think if i actually if i do it this way it'll almost it should almost give him like a little bit of a mohawk along the back so i think that'll be pretty cool but as i'm tracing this i'm gonna read another question and I will uh, answer it as I'm working. But, and if there's other people who didn't leave a comment on my Instagram, you can drop them in the comments. And if it's after a while and it gets buried, comment it again so they can find it. But uh, for future reference, I do highly recommend you follow my Instagram. It's at Adam Krutinger. And that's a really great way to get a hold of me for things. But the next question that I'll have here is, uh, this person lives in Africa. And they are having trouble sourcing fur. And I have white and I need to dye it. Suggestions to, cut, to dyeing fox fur, faux fur. Um, hmm. Without dyeing it yourself. Well, I'll give you a couple of suggestions. First of all, um, I believe Puppet Pelts ships worldwide. So no matter where you are, I believe you shouldn't have any trouble getting fur if you get it from puppet pelts there's a link in the description of this video uh, for puppet pelts if you need a source for fur dyeing fur can be really tricky because of the type of material that most furs are made out of it's something that i try to avoid and actually i've never fully dyed fur from white to a certain color but one thing i do like to do is just to give my puppets a little bit of a different look a lot of times I like to use fur. I, 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 I'll take fur and I'll throw it in a dye bath. Like even this blue. I've dyed this fur before too. I take it and I throw it in a batch of purple just to give it a different tint. And sometimes I don't even plan too much on, on the look I'm going for. Just, just to make it look so not out of the box with these colors. Sometimes you want that, those very primary colors. But sometimes uh, you want something a little different. And actually one of my favorite furs to do that with that you can get some really cool organic looks out of is uh those kind of tan furs and i have an example of one right by my feet let me just trace this then i'll grab it to show you guys and this is this is one of my favorite furs to dye put that little notch there 
Again, this pattern is available for free on my website, adamkrutinger.com. But this fur here, I forgot which color it is. I think on the camera, it looks a little bit more yellowy than, than it does in my hands. But it's, it's like a blonde color. And this one is so easy to tint. Uh, it tints great. You put a little bit of orange into it, and it gives a nice organic look. Um, and, and even some reds can give it some really cool looks. And it's nice to do that because what you'll end up with is a, a color shade that no one else has, which is uh, which can be you know really important to people if they want their own unique custom um, custom looking character that doesn't look like anybody else's. Because anyone can order this blue fur, and then they can make a copy of your puppet. But if you custom dye it, it makes it much more difficult for them to you know to try to do that. Let me bring up another one of these questions here. I want to make videos with store-bought... Oh, this is a great question. I want to make videos with store-bought generic puppets. Will I have to worry about copyright issues down the road if my videos become successful? That's a really good question, okay? And I'm going to kind of answer it in a couple different ways, depending on what your goal is. If you're doing a show, a puppet show and you're doing it on YouTube, and you're hoping that it gets picked up one day by a network or something, you have to stay away from uh, those store-bought puppets because the rights are owned by the copyright owners who designed them and created them. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. However, if your aspiration is only ever YouTube, um, you can... You, you should be okay, you know, and the and that might sound seem sound strange to some people, but again, if if you only ever want it to be like a YouTube show that's kind of for fun, you'll be fine because you know people do like uh, toys with stuffed animals and plushy shows all the time. It's just you'll never be able to do any merchandising with those characters or anything like that. But if you're just doing your own kind of show for fun. You will be fine. And there's, again, there's a lot of examples of like plush uh, shows that, uh, that do stuff like that all the time. So, but, uh, and, and if you're looking for really nice puppets to, to do a show, I, I recommend it all the time. But Axtell Expressions um, has really high quality puppets that are, that can be used uh, for performances. Now, you can't really, you can't merchandise those characters because of, Again, Axtell owns the copyright to them unless you get one of his custom-built puppets and then the rights are negotiated. And that's for most custom-built puppets as well, even ones that I create and produce. So that's a really great question. Get another one here while we're working. Oh, how appropriate. Can you talk about using lacquer on styling fur for full-body character? Hmm. Now, I have used lacquer before in my fur. Uh, I can't remember if I used it in my hairstyling video on how to cut a puppet's hair. I know I used Elmer's glue. I use it like a gel. But um, I kind of use lacquer like a hairspray. Now, just the other day, I saw someone uh, in my Krutinger Puppet tutorial Q&A group uh, ask about using lacquer in puppet hair. And someone else commented that it'll melt the fur. I have never experienced that myself unless you're using some really uh, different or unusual um, brand of fur that I'm not familiar with. But every single fur that I've ever encountered does not have that effect. So uh, as always, anytime you're doing something like that, I would highly recommend doing a swatch first. So just taking like a little square fur like this, spray it with some lacquer, put it outside. Make sure if you're spraying lacquer that you do that outside. Because uh, it's uh, really not healthy to spray anything from a can, really, um, inside the house. Do it on a test. And if it works for your test, take the dive and do it on your puppet. And also, that question specifically was talking about for styling it uh, for what I'm assuming is like a monster type character. And the reason why I assume that is because they talked about styling the whole body. Um, again, play with it. It's, uh, I have done that many times before can get some really interesting gnarly textures these uh these fleas back here 
they're really beat up from going to maker fairs. Um, they, I, I did lacquer in them to style this fur. To get, I wanted to get look really grungy and textured, and there's lacquer in there amongst many other things. And and actually, now that I mentioned the maker fair, um, I actually started another podcast. I don't know if anyone has checked it out or if you had a chance to look at it. It's called um, Maker Chat Show and Tell, and it's a live show that's uh, it's exclusively streamed through Facebook. So you have to go to Krutinger Puppets on Facebook to watch it live, and then you can comment live and have your questions uh, answered and talked about in that stream. We've had a lot of cool guests. I do put the reruns on YouTube. I'll show you right here. This is the YouTube channel for it. It's uh, Maker Chat Show and Tell. And you can see some of our guests here. Just yesterday, we had Rashad Santiago on. He was the season six champion of the sci-fi show Face Off, the special effects makeup. We've talked to a bunch of uh, puppet people so far. Jesse McKay, Landon of Ventriloquism, uh, Ryan Lehman, a magician. We have another magician, Garrett Thomas, coming on soon, too. Uh, plush maker, uh, Daryl Maloney. Uh, his YouTube channel is amazing, The Broken Nerd. Uh, Chaz, James Kemp, Derek Lux, Kira Arts. She's a plush maker. So those are a bunch of the episodes that we've had so far. And um, it's been a lot of fun. It's just a nice talk, being able to talk to other makers. And why I think it's so important uh, to f to to look into other makers is because puppetry itself uses so many trades that I thought it would be cool to have a show where I talk to different makers so I could learn different techniques that I can apply to my own puppet building. So uh, now before I start stitching this up, let me take another question here. Uh, did I take this one yet? Oh, I just did that one. How's my haircut doing? My haircut's doing well. Yeah, if you didn't see that video on Saturday posted, um, I got my, it's what I call it, something like cut, got my hair cut by a puppet or something. But then you see, I, I use my puppet building techniques to cut my own hair. And it was kind of a for fun video, something different. But I would love to know what you thought about that. Um, hopefully I'll do something like that every once in a while, just a couple times a year, just to keep it fresh, keep myself uh, uh, busy. But let me look at some more questions here. Start typing in your questions uh, into the stream because I, I just brought that up. Those uh, previous questions you just saw with the black on them, those were all pulled directly from the Instagram. So, again, that's a good for when we do this in the future. You're going to want to have your questions there because then I pre-read them and then you know they'll be on the show. Here's a good question. How do you come up with a character? Oh, how do you come up with a character design for a puppet? Character designs can come from anywhere, you know, and I feel like I've talked, I won't stay on this too long because I know I've talked about it a lot uh, on the podcast and things like that. But uh, for me personally, I love being inspired by the materials. If I get a different color fur and like I was just talking about, sometimes when I dye the fur and I, I shouldn't call it dyeing, when I tint the fur, when I tint the fur, it comes out with a, with a unique shade sometimes that I didn't expect. And that can be inspiring. Like, oh, wow, that would be a great squirrel. Or that would be a great fox or something like that. Um, so that was, uh, again, I'm very inspired by the materials and the shapes too. You know, sometimes if I find a, you know, make a mold for a really unique eye shape, something like that. A foam head shape, things like that. Oh, speaking of fox too, we had uh, my good friend, Chad Williams. He hijacked my channel one day and he did a live stream on it. If you caught that. Um, it was the whole show was only available for that week, and I, we we went back and we trimmed out, uh, so you can still see the whole beginning. And then, best of all, too, well, I shouldn't say best of all. The show was best of all, but in addition to that, he uh did a behind the scenes look about how he created that show and the different things that went into it. Because some people were surprised to see that he did that entire performance all by himself and without a second puppeteer, and. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And we also had Brad Shuron from Paper Heart Project. He came on and sh showed how, we, and this was really great. So definitely make sure you check this one out too, because people ask this, especially with the quarantine. They're, they're saying, I can't get materials. How can I make puppets out of cardboard or paper? 
And that's exactly what he did in the video. He did a live stream on my channel showing how to make uh, really amazing puppets out of cardboard and paper. And if you didn't watch that video right now, you might be thinking, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm sure they're nice puppets. Like, no, really. Like the cardboard puppets that he brought up were like, um, were like almost like Muppet style. And they looked, it looked like something out of like so an animated uh, cartoon TV show or something. Like they were really remarkable. So, and, and what, another thing that's just nice about that too is those puppets just had a whole different style to them which was something that um, uh, sometimes is, you know, the hardest thing to achieve is a, a different look to make your show different from everybody else's. So let me, oh, I can't undo this comment now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. oh, hold on. These are jumping fast. Here's a question. Can you sell puppet? Can I sell a puppet? People ask me that all the time, and I actually did an entire video called, uh, I think it's called How Much Does a Puppet Cost? I think it's called that on my channel. So definitely check that out. You'll get more into depth. Um, and the, the I, I answered this question the way I, I have it in my head, which is I don't sell puppets. I, I, do, I do commissions, which is not, so I don't make a bunch of puppets and then try to sell them. I work with an individual who wants a puppet and has a design. And in a in a budget that works within that design, and then we we I, we work that way, and that's the way most professionals work. So um, that's a good question, though. Let's see what else we have here. Someone says someone's got a question, and. They keep, they keep telling me to answer this person's question. Family swim. I don't see it. You're going to have to put it in again. Let me start stitching this. It's hard to watch the chat. And so. Oh, that's a good question. Here, let me get this one. The question is, how's the frog puppet build video coming along? It's a great question. It's kind of, uh, it will come eventually. I started it. Actually, I have it here. I'll show you. Because uh, if people have been on my website before to download patterns, I haven't really gone public with this. But a couple of weeks ago, I released uh, the fried frog pattern on my website. And I'm in the process of making a build video for it. It's not a tutorial. It's not a formal tutorial. It's just a build video, which is similar. But uh, really happy with how it's coming along. I'll show you where it is now. Let me. It's right here. So I, I didn't put the body in. I have the body. Here's the body. Actually, I'll, I'll stuff it in quick. So this is kind of where he is so far. So I got his arms over there, his legs. He's like the scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. His body parts are all over the place. But uh, if you're interested in that pattern, that pattern is available on my website. It's Fried Frog. Just released it like two weeks ago or so. And uh, again, there's a video coming out with that too. But it's going to be a couple weeks because I got to finish a couple other projects first. But. Okay. Ooh, here's a great question. All right. This question says, best tips for making an online show. Wow. I was actually planning a video on how to do, how to get started doing like school shows and birthday parties and things like that. And unfortunately, now is not the really the time, of course, for a video like that. Because I don't see that kind of performance coming back for a while now. However, best tips for making an online show. I'm going to give you some. I'm going to answer this two ways. I'm going to give you the real advice first. And then I'm going to give you some, some practical advice too. 
the real advice is this. You ready? How to start. Best tips for making an online show is to just get started. Just jump into it. And some people are probably cringing at that, <laughs> at the thought of that. But one thing that I just, I, I really live by is that a lot of things, especially performance-based, find out what they are just by doing it. You know, grab your characters and play with them. In a lot of ways, that's kind of how the Muppets started. You know, Jim was doing commercials with Kermit and and Rolf the dog and you know, TV appearances and stuff. And this, these characters just started developing, you know, and, and even on the, on the Muppet show formally, you know, these relationships between the characters are built by using the characters and doing an online show is a really great place to play. Cause maybe you have people watching, but maybe you don't. And even if you don't have people watching, Sometimes that's better in the beginning because, you know, you're still working on it. You're still developing these characters, figuring out what they are. So I would just say just get started. And if you don't have any an idea, put up a monitor, put up a camera with a monitor. If you don't know about the monitor setup, that's how the puppetry is done. I have a whole video on that. It's called like how to film your puppets or something. Um, set up a monitor and start playing because either way you're going to want to sharpen those um, monitor skills especially once you get to a point where you want to start making a show and maybe in that play of of practicing monitor work you'll come up with some jokes and some character some characteristics of the puppet that you otherwise might not have came up with and then based on that you can take that character let's say you have this character and he turns out he's um i don't know really shy or something well, how would he be in different situations? And uh, and by thinking of those situations, each situation could be a different episode. Okay, so this shy character who has this catchphrase, whatever it is, um, you know, he's waiting in line to go on a ride at Disney. Or he's, you know, I don't know, going scuba diving for the first time. And, and how this character reacts to those things is a good maybe starting place to to grow, you know, what your characters are going to be. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> That's kind of going on there. Here's a good question. Have you ever burned yourself out from building puppets? Not really. And the reason why is because puppet building uses so many different trades that you can't really get too bored of it. You know, uh, but by the time I'm done sewing a puppet, I'm kind of sick of sewing. But then I'm going on to the foam work or something. And then I'm doing that foam work, which is fun. And then toward the end of that foam work, it starts to get boring. And then I go on to making the eyes, which is molding and casting, which is fun. And by the time that's done, I'm kind of sick of it. So it's the nice thing about this is uh, you, you, in each step of building a puppet, you're kind of turning a corner with a trade. So by the time I'm getting bored of it, I'm on to the next step, which is completely different. You know, you, you can't get too much within the context of puppet building. You can't get too much further from uh, sewing is to mold making and casting. You know, those are very optis opposite ends of the maker spectrum, somewhat. But like most arts, you know, it's all it's all about how you bring these things together. Let me take another question here. And it just jumped. I just had a question I liked. Okay, here, here's a question that someone's putting in there a lot. <laughs> Will you be doing a video still of how to make a backdrop for your show? 
Um, I might be. I just built a backdrop for something I'm working on. Um, it depends. I mean, there's so many different ways to do it. You can do green screen, in which case maybe you're drawing your backdrop. It's hard to say. Like, I'd have to have some designs in mind first of maybe what people would want to see. Because, you know, the making of a backdrop is so drastically different depending on what the design of the backdrop is. So maybe we'll get into that at some point. Here's a, oh, did I click it? Oh, where'd it go? Okay. How to do ears for dogs and cats? That's a great question. And I get this question a lot. And how to do them is just, <laughs> I mean, it's just a triangle. You know, and people always ask me, oh, can you make a pattern for a dog? Can you make a pattern for a cat? You can use just about any of the patterns on my website and make a dog or a cat out of them just by adding different features. If you use the snoof pattern and give it droopy ears and a nose, like it's a dog, give it pointy ears, it's a cat. Same thing with even uh, the, the green guy, that was the, my, my, my main puppet building series. If you build that with fur and then give him floppy ears and a big nose, you'll have a dog. So one thing I, yeah, it's one thing I try to get people to think about a lot is just by don't reinvent the wheel all the time. You can make using the materials and the patterns that you already have or made. You can do so much with them just by changing the materials you use. If you have only one puppet pattern, you can still virtually make an unlimited number of puppet designs using that same pattern by changing features. And this is something that a lot of shows have done over the years forever you know even look at shows like uh with it jack's big music show all those puppets are virtually i think they're all the exact same pattern but they use different colors and then they have different performers of course that give them different uh personalities uh this isn't exactly the same but even looking at the fraggles they all have a very similar look um i'm sure some of them are the same pattern or slightly altered pattern. But again, the differences are in the styling of their clothes and the colors that the fraggles are, as well as other features. And of course, the biggest um, variety for them is their, again, their characteristics, their uh, personalities, I should say. And even look at the doozers. I think they all literally look the same. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've watched the show, even though it is coming out again. It's coming out now, which is really exciting. Whoops, I missed it. Whew. Okay, let me see. Another question here. Oh, what is this one? Have you ever made a cube-like puppet before? Besides my present one, a cube like puppet um, using foam. No, I, I don't think I have. That would be cool, though. I mean, talk about simple. The pattern is just sheets of paper. That would be an interesting design to do. See what else we have here. Someone's asking about how to make a monkey puppet. Again, it'd be the same advice I just gave for the dog and cat. Mm -hmm. Oh, the chat's jumping on me. Okay. Squeaky Clean Edits says, what are your best tips you have for a beginner puppet maker? Hmm. I would say my best tips for a beginning puppet maker is uh, to 
my my absolute best tip what I would say is to do original designs. Um, you can get inspiration by other characters, but I highly recommend doing original designs because most people start, and even I kind of started myself too, doing replicas. And um, you know, maybe the first time maybe it's kind of fun, but then you just realize there's not much you can do with them, and there you get so much more reward personal reward out of doing your own characters so i would say yeah just do your own thing and as far as tips uh for puppet building which i'll give them too from a technical standpoint not just a design standpoint is uh work on your sewing skills i hear uh i mean i'm telling you that's the best thing you can really do to really boost up your puppet building is to learn traditional um sewing techniques learn how to make a blazer if you can make a blazer it'll be it'll really enhance your puppet building um because i see a lot of people try to use a, as a selling point for their puppets oh completely hand sewn well that that's not always a good thing <laughs> It depends on how good their sewing skills are. Because uh, even think of the clothes you're wearing on your body now. Like if someone said, oh, they were all hand sewn, would that make it more appealing or less appealing? Well, sewing machine is pretty good. Okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the sewing machine. But that, again, sewing machine is also a skill, being able to use that well and in the right way. So I would I'd say the best thing you can do to improve your puppet building tenfold is to. Uh, learn sewing and another good excuse to do it because maybe you don't want to make yourself clothes although that I would highly recommend that making clothes for yourself your personal body it's a great way to practice but uh, even just making your own puppet clothes a lot of people ha hire other people to build puppet clothes or they just use found clothes take the chance to start building your puppets clothes it'll improve your puppet building as well so that's a great question. This question is, what mechanisms do you use most for puppets? I don't use a lot of mechanisms in my puppets. I would say that whenever I, the most often when I do mechanisms in a puppet is when the whole puppet is a mech puppet. That's what I probably do the, bo the most. Second most would be eyes, probably. I'm not a huge fan of the eyes uh, moving on a puppet. I think it's kind of a gimmick. Unless it's really a character um, character motivated. But, and I have a couple mech builds that I'm working on for uh, some YouTube videos. A really special one that you can see previews of on my Instagram. I don't think I've revealed them on YouTube at all yet. And in general, if you follow my Instagram, you kind of get a preview of what's to come on YouTube. So I, I kind of post different stuff there. So you'll get a sneak peek at my projects if you follow me at Adam Krutinger on YouTube. And actually, let me bring up... Yeah, there you go. My Instagram is in there too. One second, let me. Hold on a second. Whoops, that's not it. Okay, there you go. Let me go back to these comments. What do we have here? Ooh, here's a great question. How do you make a ventriloquist puppet? Well, there's not, I mean, it depends on the design you're going for, of course, but there's not too much different other than the entry. With most uh, puppets for puppet shows, you want to enter through the bottom of the puppet. Most ventriloquist puppets, you enter through the back because the performer is standing next to it. And if you check out our, make, let me bring this back up again, the Maker Chat Live episode that we did right here with Landon, 
this episode here, we he talks all about uh, his puppets he makes because he is a ventriloquist and he thinks it's taken forever to load. He's a ventriloquist and he makes his own puppets too. And uh, it's really impressive uh, the different characters that he makes. So definitely recommend checking out that episode and checking out his work. I believe his handle is Landon Venting. Uh, and that's everywhere. So on Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. Well, let me see if people are messaging me questions too on not seeing any. Good. Hmm. Kitten Plays keeps commenting the same thing a lot. They're asking me about a guest to have on Puppeteers Podcast. Uh, best to leave that as a comment on the one of the episodes. Um, I'm not familiar with that person offhand, so definitely uh, comment it on one of those videos, and we will check them out. Here's a question. Will I ever do a live puppet show? Now, when you say a live puppet show, you mean streaming live or in person live? I'll answer both. We've done live puppet shows all over, mostly for private events, but also we wrote some musicals as well, some plays. The Littlest Snow Monster is a live stage puppet play that we wrote. Uh, I directed it and performed in it as well before. Uh, we haven't done it in a couple of years, though. But that was a live show that we used to do. The Littlest Snow Monster. And for live stream shows, I don't know if I'll do... Actually, I am planning a puppet show that's going to be live streamed. It's on a channel that I made a while ago. And we used to upload episodes to. But I'm actually going to I'm gonna get back into it. Again, it's these flea characters. Their channel is called Itch. And I'm planning to do a new live stream show with them. So I got some cool technology uh, for doing some, for being able to do that show live. Cause there's some special features about that show that made it very difficult to be able to produce live. So where's that comment? What do you think is best, using baby clothes or making your own clothes? Definitely. We were kind of just talking about this. You definitely want to use your or make your own clothes. And not only should you not use baby clothes, I would never recommend it. At best, what you can do is use regular human size clothes and then alter them to be different size. Because even if I was going to make a, a shirt for the snoof, I wouldn't buy baby clothes. I would go to the thrift store and buy like a double XL shirt. And use it as fabric because it's big. And then it can use a lot of the pieces. So I don't really ever recommend baby clothes. Very rarely will I ever use it. Oh, I just saw a really good question. Where'd it go? Sorry, guys, the chat's kind of going fast. Oh, here it is. What suggestions do you have for getting involved in puppetry as a profession? Okay. There's many different ways to answer that. And I'll tell you... First of all, I'll tell you the shortcut. The shortcut is to check out our podcast. Because in our podcast, Puppeteers Podcast, we inter that's what we do is we interview professional puppeteers. And some of them are people that have worked in movies and TV shows. And some of them are independent artists that do their own private shows and live shows. So, I mean, the best way to learn that is from learning from other people that are doing it. And those are the types of questions that we ask. So now if you mean as far as like, you know, 
another thing is too the best way to get if, if you're trying to be on someone else's project the best thing is to have impressive work that you've done so if you're not creating stuff and performing on your own all the time there's no chance you know even if you want to be on a show like like the new fraggle rock that's coming out let's say they wanted extra puppeteers which i'm not saying they do they probably don't <laughs> um but they're not going to just hire you and train you to do it that's not how it works like you have to have the skill already and the only way to really gain that skill is to do it on your own so i would say do your own work Keeps jumping on me. Here's a question. Since we are in quarantine, will you make a video about how to make a puppet out of stuff we have at home? Uh, I kind of already did that. Uh, I made a puppet. I made a video a couple weeks ago called anything can be a puppet or make a puppet out of anything. Um, and it was mostly me giving a bunch of examples of things because it's hard to make one video on that because there's it all depends on what you have at home. So that's why I was kind of using examples. But also, if you just have things like cardboard, like I mentioned, if you check out how to make a cardboard puppet, uh, that's on my channel, Brad Schur from Paper Heart Projects uh, did that, and it was amazing that what he created out of cardboard is something that's good, that is camera ready for a TV show. And it was made out of cardboard. It was remarkable. And if you want to check out more of how to do that, um, not you know, I, I believe if you go to that video, all of his information's in the description. And check out his website. Check out his own YouTube channel. Check out his Facebook page. He does live streams on puppet building uh, week uh, weekly, or maybe a couple times a week, I think. So definitely check out his work. Okay, here's a question. Tom K says, question, I am a perfectionist and it takes me a lot of time to progress forward in each step of the puppet making process. So I'm trying to avoid the whole thing. How can I stop my procrastination? Um, if you are newer to puppet building, which I'm going to assume that, uh, you just have to let go of being a perfectionist because uh one thing i i say a lot too is uh perfection is the antithesis of creativity it stops you from being creative perfection so how do you learn you learn by making mistakes so you have to just build i mean the best thing you can do to learn how to make puppets is to make a lot of puppets and challenge yourself in each one so if you make a puppet and it's not perfect, you know exactly what to change next time. So I would just say make more puppets, bud. It's going to be your best success. And post them. Post them on Instagram so I can see them. Tag me, at Adam Krutinger. Link is there. I love seeing people's puppets. I comment on almost all of them. But one thing that I noticed is I think I missed some of them. So when I, when I say tag me on Instagram, don't tag me in the photo tag me in the description because it then it shows up in my feed i think if you just tag me in the picture it shows up on like there's like a tagged pictures page which i never look at i only see my normal notifications so make sure you always tag me in the description not in the photo itself oh here's a good question will you ever take the task of making a full body puppet like big bird hmm i kind of have in that little snow monster puppet oh no i have i've built a bunch of them actually the little snow in the littlest snow monster i built this giant polar bear puppet which the per the performer was half out of the puppet too but it was still full body 
that was really fun. I did a puppet. I did it. We wrote a show called the wizard of claws. And that had a gigantic, like eight foot snowman. There's a full bodied puppet that the performer operated almost. They operated almost like Timon from uh, Lion King Broadway. And there was a bunch of big puppets in that, including a giant reindeer, a giant candy cane. Um, But as far as I'm assuming also you mean on this YouTube channel, one day we will. We're definitely going to do that, 100%. Um, Probably not too soon because I have some fun things that I would like to do with it to be part of the video, which are not really things that are possible to do during quarantine. But it'll be fun. Okay, let me keep getting this question. How to write a good script for a show? You know, good is subjective. What I would just say, especially if you're interested in making YouTube content, is just write all you can and then test it. Do little shows. See what people like to. If you write 10 little shows and then you film them all and put them on YouTube and, you know, two of them get five views, one of them gets 15 views, couple of them get 20 views and one of them gets a hundred views that alone it's been self it's been self curated by the audience so you know the audience right then and there tells you what they want more of so that's another nice thing about practicing in public like that which i think some people actually if you listen to our episode with swazzle that we did the johnson brothers that was oh my gosh that was too long ago we have to have them on again because they're amazing um, we were talking a little bit about that and, uh, they made some interesting points and then, um, about being worried about people posting stuff when they're young or beginner, cause then that can be someone's impression of them as a performer, even though they may have improved. But, um, I don't, I don't think that's how it works, you know, cause even you look at, look at how much of Jim Henson's life alone was documented and even his own puppetry skills uh, starting on Salmon Friends versus what they, you know, d- did in the later years. So I think it's all just part of documenting whatever it is you're doing. See, one of my pins came out. So now this is uneven. So I have to take some of these stitches out. Shoot. Okay, there we go. Fresh start there. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh. How to write? Oh my gosh, I really got off that topic, didn't I? How to write a good script for a show? Um, on top of that, I would say another good place to get inspiration for scripts, I think, is like um, looking at like the comic strips because there's such an art to doing that. You know, it's it's one thing; it's easy to tell a story with a lot of words, you know, but it's hard to tell a story with very few words. And that's why comics, and I would never say copy them, but it's a good way to get inspiration to see how the language is used, uh, especially in describing situations and things like that, because uh, it's short and snappy. Which is another thing I'd recommend in general for people who are making shows and stuff, especially if they're starting out and want to build, you know, build a show is make it too short make it really short <laughs> you know if something is think of it like a movie you know if if a movie is not good and it's really long that makes it even worse you know but some things are are just better because they're too short to to not be good <laughs> is a, how i'm going to phrase it Here's a question we have. What do you use to make a shell for a turtle puppet? 
actually I've made turtle puppets before. Um, I, I just use EVA foam. That's what I've used. Um, and in the past I've just painted it and coated it with creature cast, which is like a neoprene based, um, coating, which it worked really well. Uh, I've even seen people just cover it with fabric too, which is, I'm not opposed to that. I just, uh, the design that I had, I just didn't want to do that. So I'll do that. I've been, I've been wanting to make a new turtle though. Cause my turtle puppet, I love him so much, but he is so old and his head's a little lopsided. So it's, it's definitely time for a new turtle puppet. So I, sh I should definitely do that as a build, uh, on the channel soon. If it, if it happens, it's not going to happen for a while. Just so, so you know, um, cause I've got a whole bunch of other builds ahead of me. Like I was talking about in the beginning. Here's a question. Uh, do I have to record the voices before filming a show? No, no. And you actually, you generally, you don't want to do that. The only time you want to pre-record something is if it's a song. Because the timing with the music and lining that up with everything else can be such a pain. But doing, um, you actually, you can pre-record the voices. Pre-recording the voices, it's, it's, it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing something like a commercial, we've done that because a commercial really has to be super structured and you got to get all the information right the first time. There's usually not much improv or play involved in filming like a puppet commercial. But uh, if you are doing anything that interacts with a puppet and a real person, it kind of has to be um, not pre recorded. And even if you are performing with multiple puppets with different people, you really uh, will have much more success as far as the reactions of the characters um, if you don't pre-record it. So I would stay away from pre-recording unless that's your only way to get professional sound. Because sometimes, like if you if all you have is like a podcast mic, you know, it, you can't really use that while you're performing that easily. So maybe if that's what you're recording your audio with. It depends on the situation. We've done it both ways, but we definitely prefer to do it, capture the audio live. We've invested a lot in the mics and stuff. We have a question here. Adam, can you make a tutorial on making darts? Um, also, if you could say my name, Brax, I'd be so happy. Hi, Brax. How's it going? How's it going, buddy? Um, darts. Uh, so, dart, I'm assuming you're talking about, uh, yeah, darts and fabric and stuff. Uh, we kind of have that. We use them in almost all of our puppet building, you know? I don't randomly make darts in in puppets you know it's all based on the pattern design and if you follow my other tutorials of using clay to make the shape you want and then lining up where the darts are going to be which is just a matter of finding the highs and lows of it okay of the sculpture um and the best way to do that is just to practice you know make mistakes like i was saying earlier um Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other way could that could be interpreted. Yeah, I would just rewatch that original tutorial, uh, and some sometimes um, even with tutorials that I look at sometimes for other things like I'm tr like um, I'm, I was learning how to do. I want to start doing some machining, so I was watching some tutorials on how to use a mill even though I don't have one yet. I'm trying to get a sponsor. If you know anyone that's willing to sponsor this channel, uh, I was trying to get one company to do it, but they're just like, they're like, what? You you do puppets. Why would you need that? It's like, trust me, I'll show you. Um, but I'm trying to get a mill. Uh, and, and here's the thing, you know, 
Um, that's what I was, the point I was making with that. Sometimes going back to a tutorial that you've already watched before, you look at it, you can see it with different eyes, especially if it's been a year or two because you, um, you've learned so much about the process. And maybe something that person said, you didn't know what they're talking about in, in that moment because you couldn't relate to it. But after having some experience, you can relate to it. So sometimes it's worth revisiting some of them. I just saw a question I liked. Oh, man, it's long gone. Darn, the chat's going too fast. <laughs> Have you ever seen the two-headed turtle on Facebook? Wow. It was it's cute. It would make a cute puppet. That would be a cute puppet. I have seen the two-headed turtle. I think it's happened multiple times. Um, it'd be an interesting puppet. It'd be a hard puppet to make because, you know, unless you're doing this, right? Or if it's a mechan mechanized puppet, then you could easily do it. And I'm doing some mech puppets on this channel. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how I made my banana puppets. And I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make a, like a fluffy little bird puppet, which is going to be, and they're both mech puppets, which is going to be really exciting. Oh, here's a good question. Have you ever made a puppet without a pattern? Yes, all the time. Um, oh, I shouldn't say all the time. I usually have some sort of patterned element to it, but anytime I do additive features, um, it's not really, you know, it's not a pattern I can follow again. Like my figment puppet that I built. That puppet, even though I have some pattern pieces, you can't just follow that pattern and have an identical looking puppet because I kind of did the base of the puppet with a pattern. And then I did additive features. Same thing with the Jazza puppet I made. You know, I had a plain round head, and then I carved it out a chin and glued on a foam chin. I glued on a foam uh, forehead brow, you know, and I did an additive sculptural elements to those puppets, which I kind of consider it not being a patterned puppet. So, yeah, I do that all the time. Anytime something has a lot of uh, extreme details in its face is usually something that I haven't patterned. Let me just pin this up before I lose my place. Here's a question. Is it okay to use your designs of puppets in a show I would like to make? Um, I, I'd recommend you not use anyone else's designs. I really highly recommend you do your own designs. Now, there's something to be said for, for inspiration versus, you know, using someone else's design. In a way, you know, obviously all these puppets that we make on this channel, for the most part, are inspired by the work of Jim Henson, though none of them are literal copies or replicas. Like I said in the beginning, I, I did when I first started, it's the way a lot of people come to this style of puppetry is through fandom and wanting to replicate it. But then you quickly start to realize how much more fun it is to do your own thing which is something that, um, you know, Henson always encouraged people to do their own thing. And he always did his own thing. So, um, again, you can use the inspiration. I'd rather you not copy it. Try to do your own thing. You will enjoy it.
Here's a question. How do you film on a phone and see what the camera sees? Well, you just uh, film it on selfie mode. I did a video on how to make a movie on your phone using puppets on my channel. And actually, that's one thing I just want to say in general. A lot of these questions I'm seeing in the stream are questions I literally have a whole video on. So if you have a question, also just like type it in, like type in Krutinger and then like the root words of your question. So like if you want to know how to make hands, type in Krutinger hands, which sounds kind of creepy, doesn't it? But if you type in Krutinger hands, you'll find my hand videos, how to make puppet eyes, how to make blinking eyes, Krutinger blink, you know, things like that. You'll find a lot of the questions that you're that you're looking for. But yeah, for the phone, just turn the phone on selfie mode and you'll be able to see it. I believe you can hook up a phone to a monitor, but if you're using your phone at that point, I think it seems like overkill to me. That you know, at that point you just want to use your regular camera. It seems like a lot of extra steps for just a cell phone video. But to each their own. Oh, is it hard? Oh, I didn't mean to click that one, but I'll take it. Is it hard to edit out puppet rods? Should I do it? Don't bother. Trust me. Uh, it's a whole skill. If you, you know, it takes rotoscoping, and rotoscoping is the most tedious thing in the world. And it's such a specialized skill. Like, that's a whole skill in its own, in the same way that puppet building is a skill. I would not bother with that. Not one bit. Quincy asked, what's the largest amount of people you've worked with on a puppeteering shoot? Um, uh, the most we ever used was for the mini dental implants uh, commercial. And in that, I'll post it on my Instagram right after this. Let me write it down so I remember. I'll post it on my Instagram. We, we had a whole bunch of people under the table for that final shot. I want to say we had like five or six, which doesn't sound that like that much. But if you're, you know, a local person, you know, it's hard unless you live in L.A. or or New York City. It's hard to find a whole bunch of puppeteers. So we grabbed all the puppet friends we have and and a couple that that kind of weren't uh, and did our best. I think it was was it five or six, five or six people, which is a lot of people jammed together under a table. So that's probably the most I think I, I've had on one of my productions. Okay, here we go. I would like this answered because I want to start making puppets. What puppet should I make as my first puppet? Well, I think you should make what I'm making right now. A snoof. Again, the pattern is completely free on my website. And as you can see, it's scrolling down below. Hold on, there's Facebook. There's Twitter. For free patterns, visit adamcrutinger.com or you can go to crutingerpuppets.com. Download this completely free. It's a great first puppet to make. And that's what you're seeing now. That's what I recommend to people. If it's the first puppet, if you want to do something more advanced, do my more advanced free puppet that I have a whole tutorial series on as well. Definitely check those out. Oh, here. Oh, I like this one. We'll do a little show and tell. How did you make your flea puppets? Well, let me bring them over so people can get a good idea of what you're talking about. Again, these are really beat up. They're really beat up now. But let me. There we go. This guy is so cool. The hands are. I got to replace the arms. In the quills, but uh, these little guys here are these little mechanical puppets here. I've got this bar here that, that moves the head, and this thing here that moves those little pinchers. And uh, I actually have the whole building process to this guy on my Instagram. If you go deep down in my Instagram, scroll, scroll for like two, three years ago. I have all the behind the scenes pictures of this guy and uh, you can really see how it came together. And a lot of these techniques I'm going to be covering soon in the banana 
mechanized puppet tutorial. Pretty much all the same techniques, although it'll just be a mouth move, I think, and not uh, it won't be the head move. But we'll get to that sometime in another video. Hold on, we're getting we're getting close here on the sewing. Let me zoom back out. How do you make a rod puppet? The snoof can be a rod puppet. You just add arms. You add rods to it. Right? That's the easy question. Easy answer. You know, again, I have a whole video on how to make rods for your puppet. Definitely check that out. Then you just add them to your puppet. Oh, unless you're talking about the where you go through the back. Is that the kind of rod puppet you're talking about? If you're talking about a different type of rod puppet, I'm sorry. Yeah. What is a puppet that costs you the most time to make? Well, the one that's taken me the most time to make is the one I'm working on right now. Not right now, but the one, my big project I'm working on right now. And I haven't revealed it on YouTube yet, but it's on my Instagram, which is right down there. You can see that. Um, I don't want to reveal it here yet. I don't want to reveal it here yet. It's coming here soon. But if you want the sneak peek, I posted about it like a week or two ago on my Instagram. If you know, keep it a secret. Definitely don't put it in the comments. Don't do that. Okay, you can do it if you know. Don't do it. Check out the Instagram. It's right there. I would say, though, my second one that I can mention was probably actually that figment puppet. That took... A lot, even though I made it really quick, as in like I finished it in a week, I put hours into that man, heavy hours. And uh, if you saw that video on my channel, I did a like a 10 minute time lapse on it. But I had so much footage. And if you want to watch most, excuse me, most of the footage live, I have a second channel. I think it's called Krutinger Studios. It only has like 50 subscribers, which is fine. It's where I upload a lot of my raw. Uh, um, actually, I shouldn't say that. I don't upload a lot of my. I For a couple projects, I did upload the raw footage there. But I don't and probably won't continue to do it. If you want to see my raw footage, I stream it live weekly in the Crew and Drew Puppets tutorial Q&A group. That's where I do all my live streams. If you like this now, I do uh, more advanced builds like this at least once a week, sometimes up to two to three times a week in the Crew and Drew Puppet tutorial Q&A group. That's where I did... Uh, the present puppet that I made, the box mechanism, that entire puppet was made live streamed. If you saw the how to turn your $15 puppet into a $150 puppet, that was all streamed live. That footage. The figment build was streamed live in there. So that's another place to get a head start if you want if you really want to watch hours and hours of puppet building live. Okay, we're getting to the end of this. But then I gotta sew in the mouth plates quick, but that's pretty quick. This character is gonna come together. Let me just I'll take one more question while while I finish this uh part here. Oh, I lost it. When will the banana video be out? <laughs> uh, it's going to be a little bit. Um, 
I'll try to make it my next after this big project I'm doing. I'll try to make that my ugh, no, because I wanted to do the frog build. It's going to be three or four um, builds from now. Three or four, hopefully three. Um, not three or four videos from now, because I have some other tutorial videos I want to do too with some stuff I'm really excited to show you guys. But um, yeah, it's going to be three to four videos. Someone asked me to say hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. I hear you like my puppets. I'm glad uh, glad you like them. And uh, if you make puppets, I'd like to see them too. Tag me on Instagram, and I will check out your puppets. I get to see a lot of people's work, their progress. And I love seeing it. Okay, here's a question I keep getting. Puppet hats. How to attach and detach easily. Okay. First of all, if I do a puppet hat, I typically I make the hat myself too. So, and anytime you make something, you can kind of customize it to do what you need it to do. I've heard people using magnets in it. I haven't had terrific success with magnets. Though, um, you know, they can be really... Uh, When I say, because it can be hard to hide really well and still work well. You know, usually if it's revealed, it works really well. If it's under a lot of fleece, especially the nylon fleece that I like to use or the polyester fleece from Puppet Pelts, it, uh, I have a little bit of trouble, even if it's a strong, and I buy the strong magnets too. I'm not using like, I use in any kitchen magnets i'm using like semi-industrial magnets um you can do that but i like to use snaps snaps i even pin it in actually mostly i do pins but uh, then the puppet can take it off but they can't put it on themselves so if that if you need them to put it on themselves you probably have to go the magnet route or unless it's pressure fit because even like uh a character like Fozzie, I think he could take his hat on and off. It just kind of, his head was shaped kind of like a raindrop. So that little hat kind of stays on really well. So you can also design your puppet for it to be stay, uh, to stay on well. Amari keeps asking, how do you make Arlo? Again, that's kind of the same way you make all the puppets. You know, he's kind of like, he's virtually the small fry pattern I have on my website. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, and then you just use fur and fleece. And put the fleece where you want the fleece and the fur where you want the fur. And bada bing, bada bang, boom, you're done. You got a puppet. Add a tail, it's a monkey. There we go. Whew. All right, let's see if that created that mohawk that I was. Oh, wait, let me ask one more question. Buying puppet online is a good idea. It can be, yes. Ha ha ha. Thank you. Will you post new patterns on your website? I just posted one like two weeks ago. The The fried fog pattern is available now. Um, and I posted the box puppet pattern there um i'll probably have some more soon you know it's so hard though because they take so long to do to digitally trace them and then make sure they're printer friendly it just takes so much time it's like it's a trade-off i could spend all my time creating a pattern and or i could make in the time it takes me to create one pattern i could probably make like eight videos so that's the kind of trade-off that i do that's why i have so many more videos than um uh, patterns. 
But if I turn this off, let's see if this created a mohawk on his back. Kind of. Yeah. Comb it out. Yeah, it's definitely got that direction where it's going down the back, which is really cool. Awesome. Now I'm going to stitch in this mouth plate. Then we'll be done. Oh, I can just uh, screw the eyes on. I have the eyes ready to go. Take another question. Mm -hmm. Edward asked if I. Consider doing a uh, collaboration with the Machinist channel. I'm not, I don't know if I know that. I probably, I pro you know, a lot of those videos that I casually look at, sometimes I don't always remember who I'm watching. Once you fall into that YouTube hole, I probably have seen their stuff. Um, and, and also, I'm assuming he's responding to what I was saying earlier about wanting to get a sponsor to get a, uh, a mill so I can uh, make some more mechanical elements for my puppets um yeah i'd be i'd be open to it potentially as long as the timing works out and we have the right project that sounds cool Someone keeps asking, what monitor do you recommend for filming? And I don't have one specifically that I recommend. I just recommend trying to get something cheap that connects to your camera. Most cameras have an HDMI output. And most cheap TVs now even have an HDMI output. You can probably get a cheap one for like anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks. A small one, like a 16 or probably like an 18 to 19 inch television. And but a lot of times too, depending on what you have, maybe maybe you have a small TV in the spare room. Just borrow it, as long as you're allowed to, and use that. I've done that. I've used my television for my living room, taken it down for the day, and used it on a shoot. Especially since if it's not something you do that often, there's not always a need to have a, a designated monitor for for puppetry, unless it's something you take seriously and you really want to do it all the time. Then it can be super handy to have a designated uh, monitor. What is that? Oh, here's one. Can you do a muzzle tutorial? I'm planning a puppet with a muzzle build to do a tutorial soon, too. Uh, but if you can't wait, I actually do have one on my channel. It was a live stream that I did like over a year ago. And it's like how to build a muzzle on a puppet or something. And that was one way of doing it. There are multiple ways to do it. Again, that was a live video. So it's, um, you see the actual process in real time. And it's a long video because I showed, I mean, it just goes to show you how long puppet building can take. Mm 
Is it easier to make puppets that look like food? Well, it depends on what food you're you're making, you know? If you're making a marshmallow, it'd probably be pretty easy. But if you're making I don't know, a chicken wing, that might be kind of hard. Wouldn't that be weird, a chicken wing puppet? If anyone should do it, I should do that, being in Buffalo. We're known for our chicken wings. So it depends on what food. You know, some fun foods to make a puppet out of are like a you know, you see it all the time on shows like Sesame Street or the old Muppet show, uh, like a sandwich, a talking sandwich. It's so inherently a puppet. And actually, obviously, Sesame Street has tons of food puppets. So it just depends on what you're doing, especially if you're doing something like an orange. You can just use a foam ball and cover that and create some textures into it and whatnot. And Yeah, can be dependent on the design. Oh, boy. Can you make these Q&As more often? Well, let, let me know in the comments, especially, um, you know, I'm, I am so grateful for everyone who's been sitting in on this, and hopefully it hasn't been too much rambling. I tend to ramble. Uh, I can I can do them more often. Maybe at least during the pandemic, I'll maybe do at least one a month. Oh, and I should say, too, we're doing, um, if you like the Puppeteers podcast, we've been doing a live version of the Puppeteers podcast, and we're aiming to do one a month as well and the next one is actually tomorrow those are facebook exclusives though so you have to go to facebook go to puppeteers podcast and tomorrow we're having the uh we're having leslie carrara rudolph on with tim lagasse of tim uh and that's going to be a lot of fun having the two of them together because they're such characters and they've worked together on things. The first one we did was a collaboration with uh, uh, the Dan and Nate podcast, the other puppet podcast. And it was so fun having, you know, me and Cameron with the their hosts, Dan and Nate. It was so much fun. We did that last week, or I'm sorry, last month. And we had some special guests. Noel McNeil of Bear in the Big Blue House came in. Uh, James Voitall. James Voyhall Jr. came on. He is an amazing puppet builder. He worked on Bear uh, and has worked on a ton of remarkable projects and is an expert puppet builder. But again, tomorrow at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I believe. Double check the Facebook. It's all the information is there. We're having Leslie Carrara Rudolph and Tim Lagasse. And Tim Lagasse, uh, you'll know him from he's working on Helpsters. He's uh, he was Crash from Cran Crash and Bernstein. He was Ubi, if you remember that old show, and an amazing artist. So many credits. He worked on Dark Crystal, the the new the new series of it. Amazing guy, and of course Leslie Carrara Rudolph. Uh, her main c character that she does personally is Lolly. She works on Sesame Street as Abby Cadabby. And she's such a sweetheart and an amazing artist. And it's been a while since we've talked to her. So really, really looking forward to that. Check it out tomorrow. Someone said, I need a moderator in here. What would that do? What would that do? I'm not sure. What would they moderate? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of moderators, unless I just haven't had a good one. If you're interested in maybe potentially becoming a moderator, maybe send me an Instagram message. I'll look into that. How tall is the average puppet? Um, it's, again, it's hard to say, but I, I like to make mine around, uh, what would you say, 18, 18 to 20 inches tall. That's without legs. 
know, that's something I'm going to make available soon. That's a pattern I will have available soon is a, a simple leg pattern because <laughs> I get a lot of questions about that. And I have a really good answer for it. And the answer is if you want to make leg puppets, it's a it, leg pattern. Oh, my God, a leg puppet. That would be so creepy. No, if you want to make legs for your puppet, uh, it's the same process as making arms. So if you know how to make the arms, use the arm video. You know, it's a tube. And instead of a hand, draw a foot. So whatever shape you want that foot to be, do that. Um, but I will do a video on it. And and actually, that'll come probably very soon because I, I really want to get that out. This mouth plate's taking much longer than I... I keep getting distracted. I got to just focus on doing it. Oh, and I was saying before, oh my gosh, I got so off track. Uh, I'm so I'm so grateful for everyone who's here now as well. But I also know that some people weren't available to watch this live who wanted to. And if you are someone who is watching this later on rerun, I, I especially also want your opinion on the, whether or not you thought this was worth doing or not. <laughs> and that'll be also a really big factor of whether or not I go live with these. Oh, because you know what? Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do these lives. I'll do these more often, but then I'll just delete them from the channel. So it's only for the people who watch it live. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Let me know. Definitely worth doing. I appreciate that. You think it's worth doing live? Do it. People keep saying do it. Let me know if you think it should just be for the people who are here. Or should should it be available on rerun? Or maybe I'll have it available for 24 hours on rerun. What do you think about that? Let me know. We got to figure this out. Because I go live a lot. Just not on YouTube. It's mostly in my group. And it'd be very easy for me to hit YouTube as well. But I don't want to oversaturate it. Oversaturate the market. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Get your own Crutinger Puppets mug, your own Crutinger Puppets t-shirt. It's down in the links below. Mm. If you have any reason to do that, only reason I had these designed was so I could buy it for myself. <laughs> and I figured, eh, maybe someone else will want one. I don't know why. But I like them. I really like how it came out. I had the white version before you probably saw. But I was like, you know, I don't like wearing white shirts all the time. Depending on what I'm doing. I like the white one a lot. I think the logo shows up better. What do you think? Do you like the white one or the black one? Oh, ooh, I just pinned myself. <clears throat> and also, too, actually, you know what? You guys could be a huge help. We are starting a, a, another channel that's going to be called um, something like uh, Puppeteers, our podcast. It's Puppeteers Podcast Clips. And we want to take some great moments that people like and make clips out of it uh, so people can easily rewatch it and or find those parts easier um, than you know sc scrubbing through the whole video to find it. So anytime... If there are some timestamps of something you really, really like, what we want you to do is to tweet at us on Twitter or on Instagram, send a message to the Puppeteers podcast one, um, because we want to start making that available. Whether they're your funny moments you liked, really important tips you think somebody gave, we want to do it. It's easier for us to do for episodes in the future than it is uh, to go through the whole archive though we do go through the archive sometimes we are mostly focused on things to come so if you are someone who is watching or still going through those old ones please give us timestamps and it'll also help too if you tell us why you like that so like oh from 
uh, I don't know, 47 minutes in to 56 minutes in, you guys are talking about this topic, which is really awesome. That would make a great clip. Boom. And then we'll do it. So let us know what you think about that. And also, too, if you're watching, one thing I want to know, how long have you been subscribed? Let me know that. I'm really interested to know how long you guys have been subscribed. There's no points if it's been <laughs> extra points necessary if it's been longer. Not that there's points anyway. What am I talking about? It's just interesting to know how long you guys have been on the journey with me. Because it's changed a lot over the years. I'm trying to make it more goofy, too, with uh, the little skits with the puppets at the beginning and end. It's been a lot of fun to do, and I think people are liking it. The first one we did was uh, uh, um, it's called Don't Fall in Love with an Ugly Puppet. If you haven't seen that video, definitely watch it. That's the one with Binky Bunny getting his eyes ripped off, which is one of my it's probably my favorite thing i've ever done on this channel because zach is an amazing guy amazing puppeteer and so fun to riff with oh oh we have another announcement here too because oh so three to four years wow it's a long time 10 months a year a month a year Awesome. So my mini announcement that I have, are you guys ready for this? There's a new product available on puppetpelts.com. I have a link to it down below. It's a test project uh, that we're doing. So I don't know how long they're going to be available. Hopefully forever. But it's probably based on how many people use it. But they sent me some examples here because I'm at that moment now for all my patterns on my website except for the fried frog pattern because that needs a softer mouth plate they have laser cut mouth plates out of wood okay and here are some of the examples like here's the mouth plate to the medium shake puppet and it comes with the top and bottom and these are all laser cut out of wood. Even says right there, Adam Krutinger. So, so you know it's the ones that's associated with that pattern. So we have the medium shake pattern. That's the monster puppet pattern. We've got the pattern for the Big Mac puppet. And this comes with, again, top and bottom mouth plates. Laser cut out of wood. They're super nice. And especially, I think for the Big Mac puppet, it's really handy because it's such a bigger mouth plate. The wood mouth plates hold up a little better. And when we were, okay, let me just show the rest of them quick. Uh, the free series pattern. So this is with my main green puppet that I made. This is the puppet uh, mouth plate for the free series available on Puppet Pelts. I'm going to do a video about this too. And last but not least, I believe that's last and not least. Oh, no, there's also, you know what? Is it in here still? Yep. The small fry pattern. The mouth plate for the small small fry. And there's even mouth plate pattern. Not, not patterns. I'm sorry. These are not patterns. These are the mouth plates, the actual wooden mouth plates for the snoof. Okay? If you want a wooden mouth plate. Now, in the video, I show you how to make your own mouth plate out of like plastic like this, which is what I use a lot of the time. And we were talking about it. I'm like, well, I teach people how to make their own mouth plates. Why would we bother selling them? And then we, uh, Cameron kind of pointed it out, is uh, some having them made out of wood is really nice. Okay. And I said, well, people can just make their own out of wood. And he said, guess what? <laughs> I don't have a saw at home. And I don't want to buy a saw. So, yes, you could maybe make them cheaper at home 
if you have a saw and buy a big piece of wood, but especially if you're someone who sews but doesn't have woodworking skills, it's so much cheaper and faster just to buy them. So we are making those available to people for hopefully permanently, but at least for a limited time, depending on the demand. So if people like them and use them, they'll be available. If no one ever buys them, <laughs> they'll probably vanish, but they're really, really handy. So should I use these ones right now? Hmm. I think I will. I think I'll use these right now. And I will put this into this puppet. Now, I usually use a spray adhesive for this part, especially if you watch my videos. That's what I do. But um, I'm not going to do that today because I just ran out. And it's going to be delivered probably tomorrow. So I'm just going to use this um, uh, contact cement, which will work. It's not my go-to, though. And you could use hot glue or whatever. Whatever materials you happen to have. Oh my God, it's so, it's so nice to have these cut, custom cut because they're laser cut, so they're perfect. And it's not, and even if you do have the tools, it's not hard, but it's just so nice to not have to do it. <laughs> it's so nice to just get them. Let me get my dryer here. I'm going to take some more questions in just a second while this is drying. Let that get tacky for a minute. Let me take a question. Okay, this is kind of funny. How do I make a simple arm sling for a sack puppet? I only have one hand working due to social dis dis due to social distancing. Um, that's pretty funny. Um, like, so does your character have a fake broken arm? I would just use like a piece of white cloth and tie it in a knot, so it's a circle, and then have it go around the neck and around the arm. If, he, if it needs to look like it has a broken arm. If it just needs to look not like it's sagging, I would stuff it with foam and then just pin it to the belly so that it just looks kind of like, like this. They do that all the time on the professional shows. All the time. Oh, here's a great question. Are rubber cement and contact cement the same? Okay, interesting question. Rubber cement is a contact cement. Contact cement is technically a style of, of bonding where the, both sides are dry and then on contact, they stick together. So rubber cement is a contact cement. I would not recommend necessarily using rubber cement for your puppets. I don't think it would work that well. I've heard of people doing it. I'm not sure how long it holds up or how successful it is, but um, I would recommend using a contact cement like Barge. The one I like to use is called Master. I have a, if you and if you if you go to my website, which is scrolling right down right there, free patterns, visit adamcrutinger.com. I have a whole tab on my website called Supplies. Okay. And there I have links to all the supplies that I use. I have links to this glue as well, which is the one that I like to use. But even if you just go to the local hardware store, it's, I think it's called WED. Is that what it's called? WED? Um, there's a contact cement for wood that I know people use. So that's an option as well. So let me attach this now. This is going to be snooferific.
All right. Let me get that question out of the way so you guys can see. So we have our custom puppet pelts, laser cut mouth plates inserted into our snoof, our free snoof pattern. Now, bada bing, bada bang, boom, you turn it inside out, and then you have a lovable, fuzzy, friendly, charming little blue snoof. There it is. And lucky for you, because we're winding down here, I can feel it in my myself. This took way too long to sew. It's hard to talk and sew. Maybe next time if we do another one, maybe I won't be working while I do it. We'll, we'll see. I think it's more interesting if I'm working. I felt like just me here talking would be boring. So I wanted to do something. But it's hard to have my focus in both places. So with any further ado, let me attach the eyes. But first, let me show you what I'm using. I'm using these little wood eyes. These little wooden doll heads. Uh, if you type in Krutinger eyes on YouTube, you'll see a whole bunch of eye videos. I have a new eye video coming out soon. But one of them shows how to use these little wooden doll head eyes or wooden knobs, they're called. They look like balls. They look like spheres, but they have a flat edge with a hole in it. And they come like this. Okay. And I take these and I paint them. This is what it looks like raw, but I have some that I painted a couple hours ago right here ready to go now if you look at these let me hold it close up to the camera can you see that it's out of focus um they're white but they have a little speckling on them which makes it easier for if you're filming a movie for the eyes to be focused on and i have a whole video called how to paint puppet eyes and it talks about why that's important and it shows my technique for doing it that's a question people ask all the time Actually, let me take a nice picture of these because they look super slick. And if you're watching this picture being taken live, what I want you to do is comment on it when you see it on Instagram. Boom. And maybe everyone with the pattern in there too. Yeah, I'll just do that one. Okay. So, now you can just use regular eyes like we use a lot in this channel. There's ones like this that are flat on one side and glue them to your puppet. That's the easiest thing to do. But these eyes that protrude up like this, they need to be secured in a different way. Okay, And I talk about this in that video on my YouTube channel. What I do is I make a little bracket. Now, you can go to the hardware store and use a real bracket. They have little metal brackets that you put a screw through like this. Um, but uh, I, do, I don't like to use those just because um, I go through a lot of these and it's just, I just like to make them. And I like them a little wider too. This is made out of a PVC pipe that I heated up and flattened and I drilled the holes in. Some people have asked me, well, why don't you just use wood? I don't like to use wood for this because it's a, there can be a lot of pressure on this, and I find that the PVC is really, really strong for it. So, without any further ado, what happens inside the puppet is you put the screws like this. Can you see that? Okay. Let me zoom in. Zoom in. Maybe I can't zoom in. I can't find my... There it is. So like this and then these eyes get screwed into there and it's really tight okay and those eyes uh, they won't separate because if you just glue these to the fur they can kind of flop around on you okay but when you drill it in they're tight they lock in okay so let me do that right now Hardest thing, though, is to find that perfect spot. Oh, yeah, I like this mouth plate a lot. I like that wooden mouth plate. That is slick. So let me place these eyes. Probably going to make them a little bit further back.
Okay. That looks good. Now let me just poke a little hole so I can thread those screws through. This is like a thing trying to get changed in the dark. Come on, where is that other hole? Got some questions. Let me answer a question. Hold on a second. I saw a really good question. So instead, they're going to unsubscribe because I'm not answering their question. I don't see your question. Sorry. <laughs> Ask it. Ask it again. Let me see here. Hold on. There's a lot of questions to dive through here. <laughs> unsubscribe. That's funny. Come on, I cannot get this. Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh, finally. Gosh, hold on. What a pain. So when I asked, how do they make Arlo's wiggly tail? I just, um, I have a spring in there. That's it. Just use a long spring, cover it in fur. I'll do a video on that one day. So I asked, what's the average cost of a puppet that I make? Again, check out that, how much does a puppet cost a video that I made? That should answer all your, that's not a simple question for me to answer quick. It's a very complex question that I went into depth in on that video. That was another live stream I did, I think. Oh, that was a live stream I did in the Crutinger Puppets tutorial Q&A group that I edited and posted on YouTube. Ah, there we go. Got it in. Whew. It's always harder than I expect it to be. So, attach there. Attach there. Oh, I like this. Would uh, the fried frog pattern make a good lizard just by adding a tail? That's a great idea. That's a really great idea. I would actually love to see that, too. I challenge you guys to do that because I'd like to. That's one of my favorite things to see people take those patterns 
and then use them in a different way. And they can look really cool and unique. And like we talked about before, it's a good way to change up the character to make it your own design. There we go. Look at that. Now just let me... Oh, I got to tighten this one just a hair. <laughs> there we go. All right. I've got some pupils here that I'm going to glue on, and then we are done. I like these pupils a lot. Sometimes I use the uh, the velvet ones that I have sticky back, but this is my favorite method to use. Oh, there it is. And that is to use these tiny little doll eyes. I have it in my pupils video. I have a video that's called um, it's called uh, How to Do Eye Focus, I think. Or it's called How to Make a Pupil for Your Puppet. And watch this. I'll zoom in so you guys can hopefully see. Focus the camera quick. There we go. Here's what I'm going to do is kind of balance these, find out where I want to put them. Oh, that looks so funny. Let me turn this eye. that I want to find actually I'm going to kind of draw a little dot for the eyes where I think they should go and then I'll glue right on top of that actually hold on let me put it on my hand quick that looks good to me I got that fuzz stuck in there. This stuff is the kicker. It makes that super glue dry immediately. So, guys, we have here a little snoof. Let me comb out his face a little bit. I might do a little trimming after uh, off camera. But I'm really liking how this guy came out. And again, like uh, the eye photo, I'll probably tomorrow post a finished picture of this guy on Instagram. I might add a little um, feather. Maybe not. Um, and if you are someone who is still with us now, I want you to comment on that video, on that photo and let me know. Because I want to know who the the true the true puppeteers are.
people who st stick with it the whole video through and through but i think he looks really funny i like i love these tiny pupils i think it makes the character look a little bit different from uh you know traditional puppets of this style and i really like it i think it looks kind of zany and funny and stay tuned so po comment on the eyes that i'm going to post right after this and then comment on the finished version of the puppet tomorrow so i know who you are now without any further ado are there any final questions we have before we before i turn into a pumpkin let me see here final questions Here's the final question I'm going to take. And this, <laughs> coincidentally, look at this. This question is from none other than Kermit the Frog. And as you can tell from that profile picture, this is the real Kermit the Frog. The fa My favorite puppet that I have ever built is one that I did build for myself. And it is one that people have been asking about in the stream, and that is Arlo the Monkey. He is my favorite. Actually, I will grab him right now. Let me see if I have him here. Here he is. This cute, lovable little monkey. He's been with me through thick and thin. On uh, popping... Actually, I haven't, he hasn't been on the channel too much. I built him before I ever started uh, really... Um, videotaping my um live builds yeah that's right yeah but he's great um one day if i ever do a rebuild of him i will uh record that for you guys but this is my favorite puppet i love him i think he's got a really fun design i love his little tail there and people are asking how that was made that's a little spring in there that springs around and that that is arlo <laughs> I'll get him looking at camera and me too. So you can free, free, freeze frame for a picture. Well, let me get rid of the text so you can actually see. Because no one wants to do this. Now, that's how I know you're a true fan. You free, freeze frame the picture and post it on Instagram and tag me in it. That's how I know that you are. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Don't freeze frame yet. Wait till I'm looking at the camera too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, what did I just do? I'm going to regret that, I think. I think I'm definitely going to regret that. But that's my favorite puppet, Arlo. He's just so fun. I use him with my students all the time. It's the one I'm most comfortable doing like improv conversations with because I know that character and what he would and wouldn't say. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. That... Is I'm trying to see if there's one more. No. Hi, Arlo. People are saying hi to Arlo. Oh, take his arms off. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'll show you that too. So, um, uh, where is it? Take his arm. Oh no, that's not it. After you post a video, can you put a link to the eyes in the brackets in the description? Just do it. Google. Puppet Eyes. It's like the first one I did. Crutinger Puppet Eyes. Find the oldest Crutinger Puppet Eyes video. I actually have a Crutinger Puppet Eyes um, playlist on my channel that you can check out. But uh, I tried clicking it, but then it, it jumped on me. Uh, take off his arms, please. Yes, you're right. Watch. You ready? Ah! <laughs> yeah, so his arms come off because I like to put on live hands sometimes for him. And for that, I use snaps. Now, I would not recommend snaps if you're doing live videos because these snaps can also snap off pretty easily. They're pretty, they're, I mean, they're pretty resilient. They'll stay on, but if you tug really hard, it will come off, which is why I would never use this for a live stage show or for live videos because they'll come off when you don't want them to. Just use a stitch. Just do like one stitch, tie it off. It'll stay on really well, and then it won't come off on accident when you don't want it to. If I'm doing a live show with him, I put a little stitch in the arms 
Because one time I accidentally didn't and lost his arms in front of a group of children, which <sighs> they got over pretty quick. But um, yeah, I took off. I took off his arms. So okay, hold on. I'm having trouble getting off of this. I'm, I'm liking, I'm liking talking to you guys. Hold on. Well, I'll try to take one more question. I keep saying one more question. One more question. <laughs> and please answer this. Oh, it jumped. Okay. Adam, please answer this. But how did you learn to make your own puppets? Um, for the most part, we're learning together. I'm just trying things and videotaping it and putting it on YouTube is all I'm really doing. So you're kind of seeing my live process of how I learn puppet building. I'm self-taught. Uh, however, I, I started off self-taught. For years, I was just making puppets that I learned how to make just by making puppets. But then after a couple of years, I did start going to some puppet events. I went to the P of A, the Puppeteers of America, which you should check out. They're ma amazing. I'm a member of the Puppeteers of America. I'm also a member of Unima, which is an uh, international puppet group. And they have amazing magazines where I've been able to learn things as well. I've also gone to the O'Neill Puppetry Conference where I've uh, taken classes on how to build marionettes, uh, some mechanism classes from Jim Krupa, who is a big inspiration for our podcast. He's going to be on again very soon. And um, yeah, and I just learned a lot from just being around puppeteers. You know, uh, that's, that's how I learned. That's how I learned. So with that said, I think we are coming to an actual ending. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, let me know in the comments below and especially on Instagram because it's easier for me to find um, if you enjoyed this and if you want to see more of these. Um, and for now, thanks for stopping by, guys. See you next time.